Good afternoon, uh, distinguished delegates. The second meeting of the 21st session of the High Level Committee is called to order. Distinguished delegates, I am pleased uh, to inform you that following consultations with the Bureau, I have decided to designate Ambassador Zephyrin Manira Thanga, the permanent representative of Burundi, as chairman of the working group. I'm confident that you will give Ambassador Manira Thanga your full cooperation so that the working group can complete its work successfully. May I also draw your attention to the fact that the working group will work all day on Thursday, the 1st of June, and conclude its deliberations on Friday, the 2nd of June, in the morning. Its report will thereafter be taken up at the plenary session on Friday afternoon as item six of our agenda. Now, we shall now continue the general debate on items two, three, and four. We have speakers listed for this afternoon's meeting. May I remind delegations wishing to register to speak that the list of speakers is still open, but it will be closed this evening at 6 p.m. So I appeal to speakers to kindly adhere also to the time limit which we agreed upon for their interventions. Uh, right. The first speaker on my list, who's there in India, is the distinguished representative of India to whom I give the floor. No? Not yet? No? Right. Okay. Right. India is not in the room. Take uh, I'm, uh, I'm told India is still to be with us, so permit me to uh, get to the next speaker. The next speaker on my list is the distinguished representative of Turkey. The floor is yours. Mauritania? Is Turkey in the room? No. Malaysia? Malaysia? Yep. Okay. He's there. He's in Malaysia. Yep. Also Malaysia is in the room? No, I can't see him. Turkey? No. Nigeria? Mauritania? I'm going to take a roll call like in class. <laughs> <laughs> Mauritania. Yes, I, nine. No. OK. Uh, Nigeria. No, sir. Algeria. Bangladesh. Algeria, sorry. <laughs> so, may I speak, Mr. Chair? Algeria. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Uh, my delegation, first of all, my delegation aligned itself with the statement delivered by uh, Cuba on behalf of G77 and also South Africa on behalf of the African group. So at the outset, I would like to congratulate you and the members of your bureau for assuming the chairmanship of the 21st session of the High Level Committee on South-South Cooperation and look forward to working closely with you. I thank also the Secretary General for his reports on the progress made in the implementation of Decision 20-1 of the High Level Committee of South-South Cooperation and proposal to advance South-South and Triangular Cooperation. Also, I would like to thank the UNDP Administrator for his report on the review of progress made in implementing the Buenos Aires Plan of Action, the New Direction Strategy for South-South Cooperation, and the Nairobi Outcome Document. Mr. President, since the adoption of the Buenos Aires Plan of Action, South-South Cooperation has gained momentum and has shown encouraging trends. Indeed, 
the efforts made by South-South Cooperation through effective and innovative action have contribu contributed to the achievement of development projects in different areas, including eradicating poverty and hunger, climate change, infrastructure, financing for development, and humanitarian assistance. We reaffirm that South-South Cooperation is a critical complement to North-South Cooperation in the global efforts devoted to achieving the 2030 Agenda. In this regard, a more robust South-South Cooperation will contribute to building back better and mitigate the impact of the current multiple crisis while promoting the principle of national ownership of development strategies. Along the same line, we reiterate the need to scale up triangular cooperation to enable developing countries to achieve sustainable development through effective partnerships. Mr. President, Algeria has integrated South-South cooperation and triangular cooperation into its national strategy. Indeed, my country assumes its twin responsibility of using resources wisely to sustain its economic growth trajectory while at the same time dedicating efforts to help developing countries to achieve the SDGs by 2030. Needless to say, Algeria has long been a strong advocate for South-South and Triangular Cooperation and has always been supportive of developing countries, particularly from Africa, through different national and multilateral initiatives, including capacity building projects in area of agriculture, education, and the installation recently across several countries of fiber optic cables to promote digital developments in Africa. Besides, Algeria is a key partner regarding the construction of a 9,000 kilometer strategic Trans-Sahara Highway linking several African countries with the aim to improve and increase traffic and trade between North Africa, West and Central Africa. Moreover, my country intends to forge further innovative and inclusive partnership to launch concrete mechanism of cooperation with the view to fostering sustained economic and commercial interaction between the countries of the South. In this regard, the, re the recent initiative of President Tabun to allocate a billion dollars to finance development projects across the African continent through the Algerian Agency of International Cooperation for Solidarity and Development is the perfect example of the commitment and dedication of Algeria to support developing countries to achieve their development plans and strategies. To conclude, let me reiterate, Mr. President, Algeria's commitment and strong support to the South-South Cooperation, Triangular Cooperation, and the SDG efforts to successfully implement 2030 Agenda and its SDGs. I thank you. Uh, I thank the distinguished representative of Algeria uh, for his statement. And it is uh, highly notable that Algeria has committed such large financial uh, provision for development projects and uh, on capacity building uh, and lots of options uh, with on projects of development in the African continent. Uh, it's something to be emulated. I thank you for that. Uh, may I now uh, give the floor to the uh, distinguished uh, Ambassador of India uh, to make his statement. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> we are meeting at a difficult time when multiple crises crisis continue to negatively impact all of us, more so the global south. The COVID-19 pandemic was a setback to decades of progress made by developing countries. In fact, it came at a time when the world was confronting several other challenges in climate change, natural disasters, hunger, and poverty. In the last two years, we are also faced with other challenges, including the consequences of the Ukraine conflict. Barriers are rising in the supply chains of food, fuel, fertilizer, and pharmaceuticals as well. In these difficult times, the Global South has been left largely to fend for themselves. In the test of resilience, the multilateral institutions could not match the expectations of the Global South. Today, Mr. President, the South-South cooperation needs to acquire a renewed vigor to effectively implement the outcomes of uh, Bruno Aires' Plan of Action, plus 40. Recovery, resilience, and reform is the need of the hour. A sustainable recovery is only possible if member states work together constructively setting aside political differences. In his report on uh, the SDGs a few weeks ago, the Secretary General painted a grim picture of the status of implementation of the SDGs. UNDP report placed before this meeting also states the obvious. 
We need to pause and take a hard look at the facts on the status of SDGs, even as we are at the midpoint of Agenda 2030. Decisive and transformational action will be required to plug the gaps and bring, back, uh, bring things back on track. The fulfillment of uh, commitments by the developed countries on climate finance, long-term financing for development, reform of the international financial architecture, debt resolution and redressal, leveraging appropriate science, technology, and innovation to amplify efforts on the ground, health and food security, transparent and equitable trade are some of the fundamental factors that will determine the pace of our efforts. Mr. President, we note the various positive developments, including various initiatives of India, as highlighted in the reports of the Secretary General and the UNDP Administrator. It is indeed encouraging to see various models of South-South cooperation across continents that have withstood the challenges of times and, in fact, emerged as unique innovations. 2022 marked the 75 years of India's partnership with the United Nations. Given India's foundational belief that our own development is inseparable, from that of the rest of the world, we continue to partner with the UN and its agencies in elevating South-South and Triangular cooperation. The India-UN Development Partnership Fund was the first ever single country South-South initiative at the UN. In a short span of five years, the fund has developed a portfolio of 66 development projects in partnership with 51 developing countries, focusing on South-led, demand-driven development and transformational projects. Our commitment to development cooperation, which focuses on LDCs, LLDCs, and SIDS, has been expanded considerably in recent years. Over 300 concessional lines of credit worth over US dollar 31 billion have been extended, while a number of granting aid projects aggregating around US dollar 4 billion have been implemented in key sectors such as infrastructure, hydroelectricity, power transmission, agriculture, education, health, and industry. India's flagship Indian Technical and Economic Cooperation ITEC program offers scholarships for training courses both online and on campus on a broad range of subjects to over 160 countries, most of them from the Global South. India has also taken initiatives such as International Solar Alliance and CDRI. My Prime Minister also launched the Mission Life, Lifestyle for Environment, along with the UN Secretary General in October 2022. India has set ambitious targets on issue of climate change, and we are working rapidly towards them. This year in January, we organized the Voice of Global South Summit. India considers it a responsibility to bring the issues, expectations, and aspirations of the Global South to the attention of the world through the G20 platform. The Indian philosophy has always viewed the world as one family. The theme of our ongoing G20 presidency this year is one earth, one family, one future is also based on this ideology. India will continue to share experiences where we have deployed effective digital public goods in universal identification, financial payments, direct benefit transfer, digital health, commerce, industry, and logistics, which are affordable, accessible, scalable, and relevant to the global south. Excellencies, India's vision is for developing and developing and least developed countries play a greater role in determining our common future. India stands for a global South sensitive model of globalization and would like to see three fundamental shifts that can create a conducive environment. One is the model of globalization, from self-centered globalization to human-centered globalization. This means shifting the focus more on development as a whole. Two, a different approach to innovation and technology, from being on the receiving end of technological patronage to deploying Global South-led innovations for societal transformation. And three, on development cooperation, from debt-creating projects to a demand-driven and sustainable development cooperation. In conclusion, Mr. President, the road to sustainable recovery will need our collective action. India remains committed to advancing South-South cooperation, both through bilateral engagement and at multilateral forums. I thank you. Uh, I thank the Distinguished Ambassador of India uh, for his statement, in which uh, we were reminded uh, that we need to move with renewed vigor, if I heard it right. Uh, and uh, there was, and you did mention the fact of the need for uh, the, uh, the re restructuring of the debt uh, infrastructure, uh, the architecture, 
uh, which we, uh, we said was a priority. And it must be a fundamental requirement. Uh, and you also did make the, the very important point that it must be a South-led demand-driven cooperation. A South-led demand-driven cooperation. That perhaps lays the fundamental formula for South-South cooperation. The, uh, the quite apart from the large amounts of money that you have committed to this cause, uh, you also did make the fact, the fact that the world was one family. And if you can think like one family, I think most of our problems will, can be resolved peacefully and amicably. Uh, and finally, you did make the point that there is a global South-led innovation that is necessary. I think that's food for thought, my dear friends. And I thank uh, the distinguished representative of India for those observations. So may I now proceed now to our next uh, speaker, the distinguished uh, permanent representative of Lao PDR. The floor is yours, Excellency. Thank you so much, Mr. President. At the outset, I wish to, to congratulate you and your bureau on your election as president of the 21st session of the High-Level Committee on South-South Cooperation. The Lao PDR aligns itself with the statements delivered by the distinguished representative of Cuba on behalf of G77 in China and the POW on behalf of the LDCs. I would like to underscore the instru instrumental role of the UN Office for South-South Cooperation in facilitating and enhancing South-South and triangular cooperation among nations, UN agencies, and development partners at various levels. Their efforts significantly contribute towards the acceleration of the global recovery from the pandemic and the effective implementation of the Agenda 2030. The Lao PDR welcomes the reports of the UN Secretary General and UNDP Administrator, which take stock of the global and system-wide progress made, challenges encountered, along with the recommendation for the way forward for South-South cooperation, including new strategic directions and measures to be undertaken by the UN entities as integral part of their policies, strategies, programs, and projects within their existing mandates. Mr. President, in view of moving forward this framework of cooperation at country level, I would like to underline the following points. First, the Lao PDA highly values the important contribution of South-South cooperation among developing countries and development partners, which have made significant contribution to the implementation of our national social economic plans, green growth strategy, and the SDGs. This collaboration has provided us with valuable insights and resources, enabling us to balance economic growth with environmental responsibility and to better serve our people and preserve our environment, thus creating a more sustainable future. Second, we welcome the outcome of the ministerial meeting on South-South cooperation during the LDC-5 in Doha and the commitment to leverage support for the implementation of the program of action on LDCs, LLDCs, and SITs. We welcome the adoption of the Doha political declaration and financial commitments of over 2.3 billion US dollars in the form of grants, investments, loans, and technical support. We look forward to the, to the successful convening of the third UN conference on LLDCs and the fourth international conference on SITs to be held next year. Third, we must promote South-South and triangular cooperation with partic particular focus on the post-pandemic recovery and the execution of the 2030 Agenda. To this end, we urge international organizations and financial institutions to maintain their support and enhance their contributions in response to the ongoing crises. These include not only the climate crisis, but also the ongoing economic and financial adversities 
we currently face. Likewise, we encourage developing nations to boost our involvement in creative financing avenues, such as blended finance. In this context, it is essential that development partners, inclusive of our southern counterparts, augment their assistance towards the establishment of an investment promotion regime for LDCs, as stipulated in the Doha Program of Action. By doing so, we aim to stimulate investment in critical areas such as infrastructure development and capacity building within the LDCs. As the president of UNGA emphasized, it is imperative that we forge solutions rooted in solidarity, sustainability, and science. This reinforces the indispensable role of scientific knowledge in guiding the UN decision-making processes. From our perspective, the countries of the South represent a remarkable reservoir of proven technological solutions to the developmental challenges confronting the LDCs. Building on this sentiment, we eagerly anticipate the forthcoming summit on science, technology, and innovation to be taken place in Havana, Cuba this September. This event holds great promise in stimulating further cooperation via technology transfer among developing nations. In conclusion, Mr. President, the Lao PDR reiterates its firm commitment to intensify South, South and Triangular cooperation. Our objective is to enhance sustainable development and improve social economic standards. By harnessing our collective strength, we are dedicated to fostering an environment of mutual growth as we journey together towards our shared future. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the <coughs> His Excellency, the Ambassador for Lao PD, for his statement, uh, which, uh, which clearly set out the fact of pursuing a policy of green growth uh, strategy uh, to preserve the environment, uh, a clear commitment to the Doha political declaration which he affirmed. Uh, there was a reference to blended finance as another method of, of uh, became, becoming financially strong. And uh, he, uh, Ambassador, you also make the fact that, uh, that we have to forge solutions based on solidarity, sustainability, and science. I wish you every success in your policies. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, may I now proceed uh, to give the floor to His Excellency, the permanent representative of Malaysia. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you, mm -hmm. Mr. President. Malaysia aligns itself with the statement made by Cuba on behalf of the G77 in China. At the outset, I would like to congratulate you, as well as other members of the Bureau, for being elected to lead this high-level committee. Rest assured that Malaysia remains resolute in its commitment towards providing unwavering support in advancing the work of the committee. Malaysia reaffirms its steadfast position that the South-South cooperation embodies the essence of solidarity and cooperation among the nations of the Global South. Malaysia firmly believes that South-South cooperation continues to be relevant and vital to developing countries, even after more than 40 years since its inception. Mr. President, while the international community slowly transitions towards a semblance of normalcy in this post-pandemic era, a significant number of countries in the Global South are still grappling to recover. In addition, these countries also face the compounding effects of climate change and regional conflicts, leading to substantial increases in commodity prices and energy costs. The interlinked nature of this crisis underscores the need for more concerted efforts and enhanced cooperation to address the multifaceted challenges hindering sustainable development in the Global South. We firmly believe that the sharing and exchange of knowledge best practices and capacity building among countries of the South plays a crucial role in our pursuit of sustainable development. Malaysia remains firm 
in its commitment towards fostering South-South cooperation as one of our collective endeavours to achieving the 2030 Agenda. Mr. President, my delegation also strongly believes that the reinforcement of South-South cooperation should be pursued through the active engagement of countries of the North, employing a triangular cooperation modality. We believe this approach facilitates a more comprehensive and inclusive framework for collaboration. To this end, Malaysia has been implementing the Third Country Training Program, or TCTP. By involving countries from the North, a wealth of knowledge, technical capabilities, and innovative solutions can be shared, resulting in enhanced development outcomes. Thus, Malaysia encourages the expansion and diversification of triangular cooperation programs. The active involvement of the countries of the North in South-South and triangular cooperation reflects a shared commitment to global solidarity. South-South cooperation is not a substitute for, but rather a complement to North-South cooperation. Indeed, it is crucial to emphasize that strengthening North-South cooperation holds equal significance in addressing global inequalities. Mr. President, South-South countries should strengthen and enhance their ongoing cooperation through bilateral, regional, and intra-regional regional mechanisms involving both the public and private sectors. This includes fostering collaboration through public-private partnerships across all areas of cooperation. Moreover, Malaysia aspires for South-South cooperation to evolve beyond traditional donor-recipient dynamics and transition towards partnerships that yield mutual benefits. Malaysia will continue to share its pool of developmental experiences and expertise by offering diverse programs for human capacity building and extending technical assistance to fellow developing nations. These initiatives, which fall under the South-South framework and are facilitated through the Malaysian Technical Cooperation Program, MTCP, demonstrate our long-standing commitment towards fostering collaboration and supporting the progress of other developing countries. As we approach the 2030 deadline, it is my delegation's sincere hope that significant strides can be made through South-South collaboration in propelling the advancement of developing countries towards achieving the SDGs. Thank you. Uh, I thank the, His Excellency, the Ambassador for Malaysia, for his statement. Uh, I think what was most encouraging is that you said that there are significant strides that still can be made to achieve the SDGs, notwithstanding the gloom that hovers over us. So there is room for optimism. And uh, you also said that we need to go beyond traditional donor-recipient uh, partnerships uh, to develop this whole um, uh, to this whole initiative. Thank you very much uh, for your contribution. Uh, may I now uh, give the floor to the, uh, His Excellency, the Permanent Representative of Bangladesh. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. My warmest congratulations to you and all members of the Bureau on your election to conduct the 21st session of the High-Level Committee of South-South Cooperation. Bangladesh aligns itself with the statements of the G77 and China and the LDC group delivered by Cuba and Nepal, re respectively. Additionally, I wish to make a few remarks in my national capacity. I thank the Secretary General and the UNDP administrator, administrator for their comprehensive reports. Both reports have struck an upbeat tone and indicated that Amid perilous cross-cutting challenges, South-South cooperation is heading in a positive direction. The push toward leveraging and scaling up South-South and triangular cooperation to build a more sustainable, inclusive, and resilient world for all is certainly a welcome development. Such cooperation is critical to address the multifaceted challenges that the developing world faces. For the past few years, the Global South has suffered disproportionately from a confluence of shocks, including the pandemic, growing inequality, rising commodity prices and debt levels, climate change, and the war in Ukraine, among other entrenched structural and multidimensional vulnerabilities. 
These cascading challenges have called for the widening of the scope of global cooperation. This session of the high-level committee provides us with an important opportunity to explore how we can leverage South-South and Triangular Cooperation for recovery and re rebuilding to achieve sustainable development. Mr. President, despite the encouraging momentum towards enhanced South-South initiatives, common challenges confronting most Southern countries on issues that include food security, health, education for all, gender and income inequality, digital gap, access to clean and affordable energy, debt relief, and climate change are not being addressed quickly enough. Against this backdrop, it now seems more pressing than ever for the countries in Global South to take stock of their combined abilities and undertake new and innovative initiatives, models, and approaches to South-South and Triangular Cooperation to solve the pressing challenges that they face. Allow me to highlight a few points in this regard. First, we consider South-South and Triangular Cooperation as a vital driver of our development. At the BAPA Plus 40 conference, Bangladesh Foreign Minister proposed to establish a forum of the Minister of Development or Finance and of Foreign Affairs of the South to take forward our collaborative work. He reiterated the call at the last session of, its, of this committee as reflected in the Secretary General's 2022 report of the committee. We continue to call for establishing a forum for finance and development and for foreign ministers of developing countries to discuss, decide, and explore critical issues and strengthen collaborations. Second, there is an urgent need to leverage the South-South and Triangular Cooperation mechanisms to improve access to development finance on concessional terms, to support partnerships for sustainable development, as well as to facilitate access and transfer of technologies, in particular green technologies, to address the impacts of climate change. Climate change. Inadequate means of implementation remain the main impediment to the achievements of the sustainable development goals. Third, the implementation of the 2030 Agenda requires us to not only expand technical cooperation among the southern countries, but also to forge meaningful multi-stakeholder partnerships involving civil society, think tanks, the private sector, and academia, as well as increased financial resources cooperation among multilateral development banks, international financial institutions, and southern-led multilateral, regional, and bilateral financial and development institutions. Fourth, the UN development entities must continue to mainstream South-South and Triangular Cooperation mechanisms in Sustainable Development Cooperation Framework that they implement at the country level. There is also a need for national and regional authorities to strengthen these mechanisms by pooling human and financial resources and implementing related agreements and programs. Fifth, the support of development partners for advancing effective triangular cooperation is critical to strengthen the financial, scientific, and technological capabilities of developing countries and in order to narrow the digital divide and better harness sustainable technologies to accelerate the achievement of the SDGs. Finally, Mr. President, we support the strengthening of the UN Office of the South-South Cooperation by allocating adequate resources and upgrading the position of the head of the office in a way that is commensurate with the growing role and expanding responsibilities expected of this office in the days to come. I thank you. I thank His Excellency, the Permanent Representative of Bangladesh for his statement, uh, which also ended, ended in a very, uh, perhaps a very positive note when he said, that we are heading uh, in a positive direction and that uh, we need to innovate new models of uh, financial uh, architecture, that we need to develop our regional and uh, domestic mechanisms uh, for better governance and so on and so forth. Uh, thank you, Ambassador. Uh, may I uh, now proceed to give the floor to the distinguished representative of Guinea. The floor is yours. Right, we'll come back to Guinea a little while later. Uh, can I now give the floor, permit me to give the floor to 
the distinguished representative of Turkey. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I also would like to start by congratulating you, Mr. President, and the members of the Bureau on your election to preside over 21st High-Level Committee on South-South Cooperation. The South-South and Triangular Cooperation is an essential intra-regional and inter-regional development model that has the potential to complement overall efforts towards achieving SDG targets. We are happy to see that the UN organizations are moving forward in terms of institutionalizing this model as an integral part of their policies and programs. A multitude of challenges from economic and financial crises to disruptions in energy and food supply chains and increasingly destructive impact of climate change are threatening the development prospects, including in South-South cooperation framework. On the other hand, these challenges have also revealed the relevance and functionality of this model in terms of enhancing solidarity, exchanging knowledge, and best practices. As a country which went through a devastating earthquake, we have felt the importance of this solidarity firsthand. On this occasion, I would once again like to thank all countries who stood with us in those times of hardship. Turkey is actively engaged in international efforts to strengthen South-South and triangular cooperation. As such, regional partnerships that we have developed over several decades now with different parts of the world and the activities of various Turkish agencies are completely in line with the principles and purposes of the South-South cooperation. Turkish Cooperation and Coordination Agency plays an important role in these efforts through its 60 coordination offices located in 58 countries and implementing projects and programs in 150 countries. We are also pleased to host UNDP International Center for Private Sector in Development in Istanbul and UN Technology Bank for the least developed countries in Gebze. Taking this opportunity, I would like to call on all development partners to increase their support to the UN Technology Bank and help diversify its resources. We also call on the LDC partners to make better use of the bank's expertise. Turkey-Africa Partnership Summit that we have organized three times so far is another useful framework for South-South cooperation, especially in the fields of infrastructure, agriculture, healthcare, telecommunications, and capacity building. Turkey will continue to increase its engagement with all development partners within the context of south South and triangular cooperation. I thank you. Uh, I thank the distinguished representative of Turkey for his statement. Uh, uh, I can sh certainly tell you, sir, that we all share with you those, uh, the grief of those difficult times that you faced uh, during these natural disasters that you experienced. Uh, notwithstanding, uh, uh, you still show a commitment uh, to the ideals of South-South cooperation, which, is, which shows resilience of, uh, as a nation and as a peoples. Uh, the, uh, and uh, to support, and you also called, notwithstanding, an increased support to enhance contribution to the UN Technological Fund. Uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for those thoughts, not, notwithstanding the difficult times that you have experienced. And we wish you all the best in the future. Uh, may I now, now proceed to uh, the next uh, of our speakers, the distinguished representative of China. The floor is yours, sir. 
Thank you, Mr. President. The Chinese delegation congratulates you on your election as president of this session. We wish this current session a complete success under the leadership of you and other members of the Bureau. China aligns itself with the statement made by Cuba on behalf of the Group of 77 and China. Today's interlocking global challenges severely hampers severely hamper developing countries' efforts to implement the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The current session of the High-Level Committee is very timely. We hope that this session will further promote the support of the UNDS for South-South Cooperation. China would like to stress the following points. First, we should give full play to the important role of the UN in deepening South-South Cooperation. Developing countries have been working together in solidarity and continue to demonstrate the strength and resilience of South-South cooperation. We hope that the UNDS will continue to follow the basic principles of South-South cooperation, namely sovereignty, national autonomy, mutual benefit, equality, and unconditionality, respect the needs and priorities of developing countries, explore new ideas and new modalities of supporting South-South and triangular cooperation, and provide practical policy and resource support for South-South cooperation. Second, we should deepen international development cooperation and achieve common development. As a strong supporter and advocate of international development cooperation, the UN should continue to give priority to development issues, mobilize resources from all parties, and support South-South cooperation. In international development cooperation, North-South cooperation is the main channel, and South-South cooperation is a useful supplement. Developed countries should earnestly shoulder their historical responsibilities, seriously fulfill their ODA commitments, and provide financial, technological, and capacity-building support to developing countries. Third, we should take concrete actions to implement the SDGs. The international community and the UNDS should continue to be guided by the 2030 Agenda, focus on the urgent needs of developing countries, adopt practical measures to provide effective support in poverty reduction, education, digital economy, climate change, and green development, and help developing countries build up their capacity for sustainable development. Mr. President, China staunchly supports South-South cooperation. After launching the Global Development Initiative, or GDI, China has stepped up the implementation efforts. We created the Global Development and South-South Cooperation Fund, increased investment in the China-UN Peace and Development Fund, and established the Global Development Promotion Center with a view to promoting the deep alignment of the GDI with the SDGs as well as the development strategies of countries concerned and supporting other developing countries to achieve independent and sustainable development. China stands ready to work together with other countries and the UNDS to leverage the momentum created by this session as well as the upcoming SDG summit, build consensus, deepen South-South cooperation and make renewed contributions to the common development of developing countries. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of China for his statement. Uh, and I can only make the observation uh, that your contribution to South-South cooperation is well known uh, and well established. And perhaps I wouldn't be wrong to say that uh, you were perhaps one of the forefathers of this whole mechanism and it, it, we find some of its source uh, to China, which uh, initiated this whole idea of South-South cooperation, and that's something historically, which is a matter of record. And we, we hope you will continue with the same zeal and, uh, uh, the, and encourage South-South cooperation to develop more with your GDI mechanism, which we all know about. Thank you very much. The, uh, may I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of El Salvador. The floor is yours. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Mr. President. El Salvador joins in the statement made by Cuba on behalf of the G77 and China. And the statement 
of Morocco in his capacity as the presidency of uh, like-minded uh, groups of countries in support of middle-income countries. And in our national capacity, with we would say the following. My delegation welcomes the start of a new session of the High-Level Committee on South-South Cooperation, and we congratulate the Bureau for its leadership in organizing this session. We are facing many interrelated, multidimensional crises, the effects of which are greater and um, uh, in developing countries, and they are affected disproportionately. To address these challenges, we need global solidarity, multilateralism, and international cooperation. And we need to go beyond rhetoric and promote a search for an implementation of innovative solutions leading to addressing the various and differentiated needs and challenges of developing countries, among which middle-income countries like El Salvador face specific difficulties and challenges. In this context, there is a growing need uh, for and pressure on other uh, financing modalities and cooperation flows to be able to support national efforts and actions in line with the priorities and needs of sustainable, sustainable development. We recognize the importance of South-South cooperation for the implementation of the SDGs without it being a replacement for other uh, development cooperation commitments. It is rather a complement to it leading to exchanges and joint benefits. In the case of El Salvador, and given the need to give an immediate response to national needs, beginning in the year 2020, we have a renewed institutional architect architecture on cooperation through the establishment of the International Cooperation Agency of El Salvador, ESCO, under the presidency of the Republic with which together with the ministry, the foreign ministry, we have a dynamic, effective vision, action-oriented of management, implementation, follow-up, and monitoring of international cooperation. As part of the strategic actions promoted by this new institutional architecture, my delegation would like to emphasize a strengthening of national mechanisms on the posi positioning of El Salvador as a dual role actor, as a provider and beneficiary of South-South uh, uh, cooperation initiatives. At the first meeting of the Regional Conference on South-South Cooperation in Latin America and the Caribbean, which is meeting in Santiago, Chile, right now, ESCO is participating. And we hope that there will be relevant feedback uh, for the uh, discussions and established mechanisms at the global level. Also, the government of El Salvador has prepared a portfolio of strategic initiatives and projects, and we are thus ready to offer lessons learned, knowledge sharing, exchanges of experience on the implementation of key policies and actions in areas such as citizen safety, uh, early childhood development, innovation, health systems, education, renewable energies, among others. Mr. President, we welcome the detailed report of the Secretary General on the efforts implemented by the entities of the UN system to strengthen South-South and triangular cooperation and the Office of the United Nations on South-South cooperation. In like manner, we appeal mainly to those partners who may be in a condition to do so to address the needs for financing and resources to continue supporting the mechanisms and funds for South-South cooperation. This will lead to greater exchanges of knowledge, uh, transfers of technology, and capacity building. El Salvador uh, firsthand has experienced the uh, uh, existing mechanisms and platforms uh, in uh, the area of education and agro-environmental innovation, El Salvador recognizes that to harness the potential of science, technology, and innovation, including digital technologies, uh, that this is pivotal to address the multidimensional challenges we 
developing countries in particular face. And we recognize that ICTs have the potential to offer solutions to new and changing challenges to development. The persistent digital divide is one of the main obstacles to the achievement of the SDGs. To use the technology, uh, the potential of technology, and to guarantee connectivity for all requires investing on digital infrastructure which are inclusive and accessible to all. In conclusion, El Salvador acts as a key partner for South-South cooperation in the search of joint solutions, uh, shared learning, knowledge transfers, and capacity building in addressing present challenges. On this path, we hope to have the support of our allies and of the United Nations system, in particular that of the United Nations Office for South-South cooperation. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of uh, El Salvador for his statement. And in the course of that statement, we heard you tell us that we need to go beyond rhetoric. Now, that, that's pretty important. In other words, we just can't pay lip service to what we are just saying, but we really have to translate all this into real-time action. And he also did make the point that we need to identify our differentiated needs. Now, that's important as much as we need to identify our differentiated competencies in achieving uh, the SDGs uh, and the need for uh, the emphasis on digital infrastructure development. I thank you for making those points. Uh, may I now uh, proceed to give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Philippines. The floor is yours, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. I wish to congratulate you on your election as president of this session, as well as that of the distinguished uh, bureau members. We align ourselves with the statements of both the G77 in China and the like-minded group of country supporters of middle-income countries. South-South cooperation is indeed a key modality that can contribute to the achievement of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. It has evolved significantly over the past decades and remains ever more important today as the international community faces new and emerging challenges. The Philippines recognizes the disproportionate impact of COVID-19 on the Global South and highlights the importance of South-South and triangular cooperation toward a resilient future, particularly first in ensuring the implementation of universal health coverage. We should collectively prepare for future pandemics and other health emergencies that are likely to occur. Second, in ensuring equity in pandemic prevention, preparedness, response, and recovery of health systems. This includes increasing research and development capacities in ensuring timely access to affordable, safe, efficacious and effective pandemic response products. Third, in supporting the implementation of the One Health Joint Plan of Action 2022-2026 to address the consistent threat of zoonotic and vector-borne diseases, as well as environmental issues. Fourth, investing in and ensuring the equitable distribution of health infrastructure and human resources for health. The Philippines is committed to South, South cooperation and intends to strengthen its support for the development efforts of other developing countries, while likewise benefiting from the support and cooperation provided to us by fellow developing countries. On our part, we can share our experience, lessons learned, and best practices in COVID-19 recovery and SDG implementation. On COVID-19 recovery, we have enacted legislation to provide a social amelioration package and safety nets to all affected sectors. We established a social protection floor with nationally defined sets of basic social security guarantees for protection aimed at preventing or alleviating poverty, vulnerability, and social exclusion. There are also priority bills for legislation on the establishment of the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, 
or CDC, and Virology and Vaccine Institute of the Philippines, VIP. On SDG implementation, other countries may wish to recreate our effective resource mobilization, results-based budgeting system, and expenditure tagging, SDG monitoring framework, and institutionalized multi-stakeholder engagement in SDG implementation. Mr. President, the Philippines remains in resolute solidarity with the global south towards an inclusive, sustainable, and resilient future. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I thank the distinguished ambassador from the Philippines for his statement. Uh, what fascinated me last was the most was the expression of exp expenditure tagging, uh, which I thought was uh, something that we learn to really learn to learn, learn nearly need need to learn, perhaps carefully, because it's so easy to spend someone else's money, and uh, governments are notorious for that. The uh, so expenditure tagging is something that we probably would like to learn from you. You also told us about the. Uh, your commitment to the, uh, 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 to the to South South Corporation, the social uh, the amelioration of uh, the social uh, the the package itself, which looks after uh, provides social security to your own people, is something that is worthy of being considered. So thank you very much for those observations. May I now proceed to give the floor to the distinguished representative of Portugal? The floor is yours. Excellencies, dear colleagues, uh, at the outset, uh, let me say that Portugal aligns itself with the statement I made this morning by the EU delegation on behalf of the EU and its member states, and I would like to add the, former, the following remarks in, a, in a, my national capacity. Mr. President, South-South and Triangle cooperation are important levers for the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. This is why Portugal welcomes UN entities increasingly mainstreaming these modalities of cooperation in their activities, including through the designation of specific focal points. We value the recommendations of the latest SG report on enhancing South-South and Triangular cooperation for stronger institutional mechanisms and partnerships that are inclusive of civil society, academia, and the private sector. Let me also express our appreciation for the work of UNOSC on guidelines to implement the UN system-wide strategy on South-South and triangular cooperation, aiming to further integrate it into country analysis and sustainable development cooperation frameworks. As Portugal has presented its second VNR at the HLPF this year, we would like to thank UNOSC for its ongoing work on a handbook to guide reporting on South-South and triangular cooperation in VNRs. I can assure you that our review takes this contribution into account. In the recently approved 2030 Portuguese Development Cooperation Strategy, the focus on triangular cooperation is strengthened, and we see triangular cooperation as an important instrument also in the context of international organizations of which we are members, such as the Ibero-American Conference or the Community of Portuguese-Speaking Countries. In the context of the former, the Guide for Triangular Cooperation Management in Ibero-America is a good example of the work that can be done in promoting this modality. Through triangular cooperation, all countries can be donors, facilitators, and beneficiaries in a way that overcomes the traditional north-south dichotomy without prejudice to developed countries' responsibilities in the field of international development. We are committed to continuing to promote south-south and triangular cooperation as a means of implementing the 2030 Agenda by fostering better visibility and better own ownership by all partners uh, involved. Portugal's contribution in this regard is threefold. First, we advocate for triangular cooperation by regularly conven convening partners in annual international meetings in the subject, organized co collaboration with the OECD. Second, we have partnered with countries in Africa and Latin America, for instance, in the agricultural sector, for the sustainable production of coffee in Mozambique with Brazil, or in the cocoa sector with Colombia and São Tomé Príncipe. And thirdly, we have developed a network of agreements with a view to developing triangular projects with partner countries in Africa. In closing, let me say we look forward to seeing all interest parties in October in Lisbon at the seventh international meeting on triangular cooperation. I thank you. Uh, I thank the distinguished representative of Portugal for his statement. And uh, we take particular note of the fact of your Portuguese development uh, cooperation support mechanism which supports triangular cooperation and your commitment to South-South uh, cooperation. I thank you. Uh, may I give the floor now 
to the distinguished representative of Thailand. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, Thailand would like to congratulate you and other members of the Bureau upon your election to lead the 21st session of the High-Level Committee on South-South Cooperation. I am confident that under your guidance, we will have fruitful deliberations, which will shed light on our concerted effort on South-South and Triangular Cooperation to support inclusive and sustainable recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. I also wish to take this opportunity to welcome the appointment of Ms. Dima al khatib as the new director of the UN Office for South-South Cooperation. Thailand looks forward to continue close partnership with UNOS under her leadership. Thailand aligns itself with a statement made by Cuba this morning on behalf of the Group of 77 and China and wishes to state the following in its national capacity. In the midst of multiple challenges to the SDGs, Thailand continues to attach great importance to and remains fully committed to advancing South-South and Triangular cooperation. This approach is central to Thailand's international development cooperation policy and strategy and an integral part of SDG 17. We will continue to work closely with fellow countries of the Global South along with all development partners, including traditional and emerging donors, to bring into motion the plan of action set forth by the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. We can do it together. We see the upcoming SDG Summit this September as a pivotal moment to rescue the SDGs and accelerate our efforts to promote sustainable development, including through South-South cooperation. Please allow me to briefly lay out Thailand's contribution and approach to South-South and Triangular Cooperation in the following three points. First, we work closely with the United Nations, especially with the UNOS, to advance South-South and Triangular Cooperation. The close working relationship was reflected and highlighted by the co-hosting of the 11th Global South-South Development Expo or GSSD Expo between Thailand, UNOS, and UNSCAP in Bangkok last year. These GSSD Expo to get, uh, brought together over 5,000 participants from member states and development partners across the world to share their best practices, new initiatives, and innovative solutions to address development challenges. Earlier this year, on 27 March, Thailand and the UN country team announced the launch of three South-South and Triangular Cooperation Development Projects on organic agriculture, maternal health care, midwifery, and adolescent pregnancy, as well, as well as global health diplomacy. These projects involve development partners from the United Nations system, UNFPA, WHO, ITC, and the UN country team. The countries of the Global South in Asia-Pacific and the European Union, our long-standing triangular partner. Secondly, Thailand advocates for South-South and triangular cooperation with countries of the Global South and traditional donors alike. Having experienced different stages of the national development ourselves, we recognize the importance of international support and global partnership to help overcome obstacles along the path on sustainable development. South-South-South cooperation is Thailand's current development approach with the aim to connecting the Global South together to play a more active and effective role in development cooperation and to expedite the attainment of SDGs and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, especially when the international community is facing multiple challenges such as depletion of resources, more extreme weather patterns, food insecurity, emerging new disease, geopolitical tensions, and global economic slowdown. Having said that, Mr. President, Thailand views that the cooperation among the Global South is not a substitute for, but a complement to North-South cooperation, as underscored by the Group of 77 and China. Strengthening and expanding cooperation among developing countries shall not reduce the ODA commitment of the developed countries. Mr. President, my third and final point is that local knowledge is also critical to the success of development cooperation. 
Thailand embraces local wisdom as well as digital technology, innovations, and BCG economy model. The Sufficiency Economy Philosophy, or the SEP, our homegrown development approach, puts an emphasis on people-centered development and local wisdom. To strengthen the foundation of our long-term growth, greater importance is given to boosting resilience in four important pillars of human security, food, employment, health, and energy, and environment. In addition to the SEP and VCG economy model, this strategic focus is guiding Thailand's engagement in developing cooperation with our partners. To expedite the achievement of 2030 agenda that was derailed by the COVID-19 pandemic, Thailand has utilized technology and innovation to bring development back on track. Furthermore, we also share our local, locally developed technologies and innovation with our development partners through the implementation of our development projects. In this regard, the private sector and can play an important role with their contributions in the areas of technology and resources. Let me conclude by quoting the BAPA Plus 40 outcome document, which recognizes that poverty reduction policies and strategies in conformity with national conditions and circumstances have enabled some developing countries to lift millions of their citizens out of extreme poverty. And we invite all relevant stakeholders to share their knowledge and experience, particularly homegrown development approach, in order to intensify efforts towards eradication of poverty in all its form and dimensions through South-South and Triangular Cooperation." End of quote. In times of crisis, opportunity also presents itself, and I am optimistic that we, as a global community, can leverage the synergies created by the South-South and Triangular Cooperation to help rescue and ultimately attain the sustainable development goals. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished uh, representative of Thailand for her statement, uh, and particularly the just two last points, and that was that uh, that Thailand addresses the, uh, the the journey towards achieving the SDGs <coughs> by adopting technology uh, to bring it back on track. <coughs> now, I thought that was very interesting, and there was also that was more interesting, and that is your SCP policy, and that's sufficiency uh, economic policy. Uh, to, uh, uh, that you adopt in addressing these issues. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, may I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Kenya. I thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Kenya aligns itself with a statement delivered by Cuba on behalf of the G77 and China, and the statement made by South Africa on behalf of the African group. I join others in congratulate you, congratulating you, Mr. President, as well as the other members of the Bureau on your election to the High Level Committee and reaffirm Kenya's support as you undertake this important responsibility of steering the committee. My delegation also congratulates Ms. Dima Al-Khatib as the new director of the United Nations Office for South-South Cooperation. Kenya looks forward to working with you. Mr. President, the world is facing increasingly devastated crises, such as geopolitical dynamics and tensions, armed conflict, climate change, insecurities, including food and water shortages, as well as the lingering impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Though the impact of these multiple crises may be global in nature, developing nations, particularly in Africa and the global south generally, continue to bear the brunt. We are witnessing aggravated poverty, widening inequalities, and erosion of gains to building back better from the pandemic, as well as delayed achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. South-South Cooperation has been instrumental in addressing development challenges for countries in the Global South. However, we must do more 
to make the cooperation consistent and practical in line with the 2019 Buenos Aires Plan of Action plus 40 outcome document. Kenya acknowledges the efforts by the United Nations Office for South-South Cooperation through its strategic framework 2022-2025. We anticipate that this office will continue supporting developing countries recalibrate their implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development in line with their needs and national priorities. We also appreciate the role that other United Nations programs and agencies have played in supporting initiatives of South-South South -South and Triangular Cooperation. As many others have mentioned, South-to-South -South Cooperation assistance is complementary to North-South Cooperation and is in no way expected to replace official development assistance. Mr. President, my delegation would like to propose the following four points. First, that development assistance from emerging development partners in the Global South be will be directed to projects that are geared towards knowledge and information sharing, science and innovation, narrowing technology, technological divides, improving productive capacity, infrastructure, trade, investment, energy, and transport. Second, that there is a need to establish South-South-led multilateral initiatives and expand focus on Southern national banks to more countries in the developing world. Third, we must explore new approaches and strategies involving development and trade and establish more fora between existing and emerging development partners in order to leverage on our comparative advantages. Fourth, developing countries continue facing challenges related with attaining adequate fiscal space for sustainable development. In the face of dwindling resources and competing priorities, it is therefore inevitable for governments to, en to engage with the private sector. This requires a stable macroeconomic environment, as well as legal and regulatory frameworks to support public-private partnerships, PPPs. In this regard, countries from the Global South should share experiences on best practices on PPPs, including legal and institutional frameworks that allow them to reap the benefits of the private sector. Such benefits range from employment creation, revenue generation, infrastructure development, innovative solutions to enhance productivity, and ultimately sustainable development. As I conclude, we believe that the deliberations over the next few days will foster new and reinvigorated commitments to strengthening South-South cooperation for the benefit of the Global South. Kenya remains committed to the spirit of South-South cooperation as well as triangular cooperation. I thank you, Asante. I thank uh, Her Excellency, uh, the representative of Kenya for her statement which highlighted perhaps uh, the fact that at the end of the day, it was the global south that bears the brunt. Uh, the cocktail of problems that we have ends up at our feet. That's what she very simply said. Uh, she also did make the point that uh, uh, the development assets uh, assistance be directed to knowledge sharing and, uh, and that we must uh, perhaps re uh, have a kind of uh, rehabilitate uh, uh, our or recalibrate our needs in keeping with our priorities. And I, that those are some real home truths, really, uh, that we must do things according to the, in other words, we tailor our suits according to the cloth we have and uh, try and work within our own competencies. I thank you.
for that message. That was very clear. Uh, may I now give the floor uh, to Her Excellency, the Ambassador of Costa Rica. The floor is yours, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. President. For Costa Rica, South-South and Triangular Cooperation are essential instruments to our vision of development as established in the Buenos Aires Plan of Action. At the national level, we have tried to strengthen and expand our capacity of supply and demand for these modalities of cooperation to consolidate, to consolidate systems of dual cooperation or shared responsibility, which are doubly useful for the donor and the beneficiary by stimulating technical capacities between them. We have also emphasized the value of sharing knowledge, experience, and technical skills, leveraging comparative advantages in our countries in order to obtain more inclusive, resilient, and sustainable results, which are only possible through horizontal and inclusive models. We support multilateral and multi-stakeholder cooperation at all levels, horizontal, regional, south-south, north-south, south-north, and triangular, to include traditional as well as new stakeholders. To this end, we must have the appropriate financial tools to effectively implement these modalities and unblock the challenges to development. This has also been a regional priority. Latin America and the Caribbean form a uh, region uh, with a tradition of solidarity. It has been at the uh, vanguard of promoting and implementing new models of cooperation, which allow our countries to promote innovation and sustainable development. In this regard, the holding of ECLA's first meeting of the Regional Conference on South-South Cooperation in Latin America and the Caribbean, taking place this week in Santiago, Chile, is a landmark. We are proud to have contributed to this achievement during the, our presidency in the previous South-South Cooperation Committee. This would not have been possible without the invaluable support of the ECLA Secretariat and the joint work done with the previous vice presidencies of Argentina, Cuba, Jamaica, Mexico, and Peru. In going from a committee to a regional conference, we create new spaces for action in the following, promoting the strengthening of national South-South and triangular cooperation and their possible interactions with North-South and multilateral cooperation. Number two, promoting South-South and triangular cooperation among regional and extra-regional actors, including donor countries and international agencies to facilitate technological and knowledge transfers, as well as joint activities in, uh, in the area of cooperation. And number three, reviewing the experiences in South-South and triangular cooperation in countries of Latin America and the Caribbean, and make progress in assessing uh, that activity in coordination with the work done by the various subsidiary organs of the Commission. Finally, this vision is based on global discussions on promoting a model of international cooperation which is more just, inclusive, and has shows solidarity, one which leads to addressing the specific needs and structural gaps of countries, as well as the creation and compensation of regional and global public goods. On this point, during its presidency of ECLA, Costa Rica requested a study on the concept of development in transition, which urges a new assessment of the processes of graduation uh, in co uh, of countries with regard to cooperation. This shows that uh, uh, they were the Unidimensional indicators such as the per capita GDP are unjust and inefficient in determining the modalities of cooperation which our countries require. 
to establish multi in our multi-dimensional complex reality. We have to have more flexible, sophisticated mechanisms with solidarity to facilitate technological and knowledge sharing, without which we cannot achieve the multi-dimensional vision of development included in the 2030 Agenda, as well as renewed international cooperation, which develops its full potential. Thank you. Uh, I thank the uh, permanent representative of Costa Rica for her statement, and uh, particularly the, I, I wish the conference in Chile a great success, and uh, your, your idea that there must be a new assessment of the, of the graduation of countries in keeping with their contribution, I think is a great idea, uh, because there must be some classification in keeping with their competencies. Thank you very much. The, uh, can I now give the floor? To His Excellency, the Permanent Representative of Nigeria, uh, the floor is yours, sir. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Nigeria welcomes this, the convener of this important high-level committee meeting and wishes to seize this opportunity to congratulate you, Mr. President, as well as other members of the Bureau on your election. We look forward to productive, to productive section under your leadership. This, this session provides an opportunity to reflect on the vital role of South South and Triangular Cooperation in accelerating recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic and advancing the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Nigeria aligns itself with the statement delivered by Cuba on behalf of G77 in China and South Africa on behalf of the African group and wishes to make the following remarks in its national capacity. Mr. President, the COVID-19 pandemic has underscored the interconnectedness of our world and the shared challenges we face. It has also highlighted the importance of international cooperation, particularly South-South and Triangular cooperation, in addressing these challenges and accelerating recovery. Nigeria recognizes the role of the South-South cooperation and supports the mandate of the United Nations Office for South-South cooperation in galvanizing multilateralism in policy measures and actions to attain inclusive recovery from the pandemic, while sparring progress on the implementation of the 2030 Agenda and achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. We believe that South-South cooperation can play a significant role in building forward better from the pandemic and strengthening our resilience to future shocks. Indeed, in several years, Mr. President, South-South cooperation has been critical in stabilizing or giving succor to countries in need. We underline the need to strengthen South-South cooperation and triangular cooperation on access to science and technology and welcome the initi initiatives such as the Havana Summit on Science, Technology, and Innovation. In this regard, Nigeria is committed to intensifying its efforts in South-South cooperation, focusing on areas such as climate change, conflict resolution, and socioeconomic development. We are also keen on enhancing our engagement in triangular cooperation towards increased resource mobilization, as well as human and institutional capacity development for poverty eradication and for addressing other sustainable development goals. Nigeria is ready to share its experiences and learn from other developing countries. We believe that through mutual learning and sharing of best practices, we can better, we can find better means of overcoming current and future crises, including pandemics. Mr. President, Nigeria's technical aid co scheme, which drives the country's South-South cooperation initiatives, initiatives at the sub-regional, regional, and international levels, confirms mutually supportive relationship among countries in this, of the South. The political contributions of, this, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the scheme to the socio-economic development of African, Caribbean, and Pacific countries is part of Nigeria's commitment to South-South cooperation. Even in the last eight years alone, Mr. President, under this scheme, at least 2,500 2, Nigerian professionals have been deployed to work in many countries in the ACP as volunteers, paid for fully by Nigeria. This is extremely important for Nigeria's diplomacy. As the global economy gr gradually recovers, the global south must forge a more ambitious path to ensure that we build back better towards an inclusive and sustainable future. Therefore, in strengthening the future, our work and consciousness must be woven in a culture of sustainability that builds resilience and will, and will stand shocks. In this vein, we must have the needed political will and galvanized multilateral cooperation to pull resources for advancing our goal of lifting the poorest and the most vulnerable populations out of poverty. This will assist 
countries in vulnerable situations as they gradually recover better from the economic slowdown occasioned by this pandemic. It's in our interest to do so and in line with our abode obligations as United Nations member states. Let me conclude, Mr. President, Excellencies, by reaffirming Nigeria's commitment to South-South cooperation and supporting UN-wide efforts in solidarity with the most vulnerable. I thank you. I thank Your Excellency for that statement in which you highlighted the fact that uh, uh, South-South cooperation, the mechanism has given succor to uh, countries uh, in need, uh, that, uh, uh, that there must be an increase of the resource mobilization, and that more importantly, Nigeria's contribution by the singular, by the singular act of having 2,500 Nigerian volunteers helping all over the world, uh, I think is, uh, is something worthy of note and perhaps worthy of being emulated. Thank you very much. The, may I now proceed to give the floor uh, to the distinguished representative of Ukraine. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to thank the chairmanship of High-Level Committee on South-South Cooperation for convening its 21st session. As mentioned by many delegations today, this meeting takes place against the backdrop of significant challenges the international community is facing in the middle of the path to achieving the sustainable development goals. Climate change, the COVID-19 pandemic, and ongoing conflicts and their respective negative impacts are creating additional challenges relating to the er reduction of poverty, food security, energy security, and the cost of living. And those who suffer the most due to these challenges are primarily millions of people from the developing countries of the Global South. Under such deteriorating conditions, the issue of South-South and triangular cooperation becomes more and more important. We are of the view that South-South cooperation is indeed a complement to North-South cooperation. Only by working together harmoniously, we will leverage each other's strengths and facilitate the achievements of all SDGs. As correctly noted in the latest UNDP Administrator's Report on progress made in implementing the Buenos Aires Plan of Action for last two-year period, war against Ukraine, among other conflicts and crises, caused a worldwide economic slowdown. It, in its turn, disrupted South-South cooperation on trade and investment, infrastructure development, remittances, and numerous other beneficial exchanges. In fact, it has far-reaching global consequences undermining our ability to concentrate on resolving global threats already existing. It also shows interlinkages within the global security architecture as the Russian full-scale invasion of Ukraine affected the world's capabilities to efficiently address other global threats, such as food insecurity and climate change. The war has aggravated the food crisis across the globe, affecting mostly those countries of the global south suffering from the existing manifestations of climate change, in particular catastrophic droughts, large-scale floods. Under such circumstances, Ukraine does its best to remain a contributor to solution of global problems. We have found a way to resume our food export through the Black Sea Grain Initiative. This brought millions of tons of Ukrainian products back to the world market which in turn contributed to the reduction of world food prices. Ukraine stands for further prolongation and widening the scope of the grain initiative to other Ukrainian ports. We are grateful to the UN and Turkey for their efforts in this regard. In addition, my country launched a globally important humanitarian initiative, Grain from Ukraine. We attract the support from developed countries to buy grain and charter ships in order to supply humanitarian food to the countries in need. Mr. President, my country is interested, open, and ready to strengthen political and economic ties with the Global South. This was uh, under particular attention during the recent number of talks between Ukrainian and Global South leaders at the G7 summit in Hiroshima, Japan. Ukraine is willing to make our contribution to deepening South-South and triangular cooperation, as well as support UN efforts in this respect. I thank you. Uh, I thank the distinguished <coughs> representative of Ukraine for her statement. Uh, the, uh, uh, we do note the fact that the, the conflict has resulted in a worldwide economic slowdown, and 
we, South-South cooperation, we hope, would help in achieving uh, a lasting peace in the conflict region. Uh, we also note with great uh, admiration the Black Sea Grain Initiative, which has facilitated and helped many countries in difficulty as a result of the global environment uh, that is presently prevailing. Uh, we hope uh, that peace will dawn uh, in, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, conflict areas and that the South-South cooperation can play a very vital role in uh, helping you to do so. Thank you very much. The, may I now give the floor to the distinguished uh, representative of Argentina. Firstly, I want to point out that my delegation aligns itself with the statement made by Cuba on behalf of the G77 and China. I also extend my congratulations to the permanent representative of Sri Lanka and other members of the Bureau at the, uh, for your election to this session of the committee. You may count on the constructive commitment of Argentina to guarantee that this new session of the committee will be a success. Mr. President, Argentina has been working and contributing to regional and uh, international fora in order to strengthen the role of international cooperation, in particular in its south-south and triangular modalities, and especially the presidency of the high-level committee at its 20th session allowed us to work to ensure that this continues to be a space for conceptual and methodological thinking in order to position globally South-South and uh, triangular cooperation and to continue with the follow-up of the outcomes agreed to in the outcome uh, document of PABA Plus 40. With this object in mind, our country uh, sponsored two parallel events in 2021 and 22. The first one had to do with financing mechanisms of South-South and triangular mechanisms. We addressed the challenges and opportunities for actors of the South in financing a post-pandemic uh, recovery which is equitable and sustainable. And we emphasized that we have to start a comprehensive discussion to include the need to uh, get underway sustainable financing mechanisms which are differentiated and updated based on the realities of different countries. Long-term development is needed, and that would be based on the need for sustainability of external debts. We emphasize the importance in this regard of multilateral financing, financial institutions and the role that can be played, that they can play in financial as well as non-financial aspects in areas that are key for sustainable development. The second event had to do with the opportunities and challenges of uh, international development cooperation. We offered a space for discussion of how countries of the Global South and their partners could work together at the regional and global levels in adopting an approach which promotes the use of multi-dimensional dimensional measuring criteria and an overall vision of development which looks at international cooperation on the basis of the 2030 agenda. In that framework, we emphasize the importance of cooperation in the, of the UN system for South-South cooperation as a means of effective implementation toward uh, achievement of the SDGs through uh, national development policies, the strengthening of the UN Office for South-South Cooperation and the High-Level Committee on South-South Cooperation were identified as vital in exploring alternatives to incorporate South-South and triangular cooperation in national development strategies. We also underlined as being of vital importance that the international community should make efforts to find innovative means to mobilize resources for development which are complementary to and not replace 
uh, north-south um, cooperation or flows or uh, ODAs. And that is on the basis of um, common but differentiated um, responsibilities to uh, relate the multilateral system uh, with uh, middle-income countries to incorporate new modalities of cooperation, like multi-stakeholders. Uh, these were mentioned as essential to cha change, uh, to transform international co cooperation into a real uh, engine for development. We hope that this meeting will offer a space in which we can re enforce our commitments to multilateralism and solidarity in order to lay down the basis for on which to address the many crises we address today in a resilient, just, and equitable manner so that we can be on the path of sustainable development. Thank you. May I thank uh, Her Excellency uh, for her statement. Uh, the contents of which uh, I was not surprised to hear at all, uh, because uh, Ambassador Screff uh, sat in this chair last year, and she knows uh, South-South cooperation inside out, upside down. The, uh, uh, and she leaves no stone unturned when it comes to South-South cooperation. Excellency, you did make the point, and you so simply say it, that South-South cooperation is a conceptual and methodology, needs conceptual and methodological teeth. Uh, thinking. Now, I think we, you probably can sit down to write a book on it, perhaps, the, uh, which might be quite useful to all of us. And uh, the need for triangular mechanisms and a sustainability of external debt, which you co consistently have pursued, and, uh, and uh, also the, uh, uh, you also went on to uh, said that you need to explore uh, the, the possibility of uh, uh, explaining uh, uh, the, uh, the, the need for national development, uh, strategies for national development, new strategies for national development, uh, and, and that South-South uh, uh, cooperation was a, an engine for development. I think those words actually summed up the whole concept uh, pretty uh, concisely and accurately. Thank you very much for that statement. Thank you. The, yes. Uh, Excellencies, uh, we have with us <coughs> another statement uh, to be uh, to which we can be beneficiaries of, and that is that of the Partners in Population and Development, an IGO. The floor is yours. Are you here? Uh, President, um, thank you so much uh, for giving me this opportunity. Let me start off by also congratulating you um, <coughs> as the president of the High Level Committee on South South Cooperation. Um, and your new uh, bureau as you assume leadership of this body. Distinguished panelists, ladies and gentlemen, let me also take this opportunity to thank the High Level Committee on South South Cooperation for its great efforts uh, in convening this event. It is indeed an honor for me to give remarks on behalf of PPD at this important thematic discussion on how to accelerate the recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic and the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development through South-South and Triangular Cooperation. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Partners in Population and Development, which is also known as PPD, is an intergovernmental organization created specifically for the purpose of expanding and improving South-South cooperation programs in the field of reproductive health, population, and development. PPD has a membership of 27 countries from Asia and the Pacific, Middle East, and North Africa, 
Latin America and the Caribbean, and Sub-Saharan Africa, which represents more than 60% of the world population. While the COVID-19 pandemic has interrupted or even reversed gains towards achieving the SDGs, it, is also, it has also exposed inequalities between and within nations. Uh, the theme, therefore, is timely, not only for the call for, for accelerating the recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, yet the globe is settled with numerous challenges, including conflicts and climate change causing political, health, social, and economic crisis. It is countries of the South that are most vulnerable to uh, these national development uh, problems, uh, as well as economic inflation, environmental disasters, unemployment, food insecurity, forced migration, and displacements of populations, which most of them have limited access to reproductive health care, especially for adolescents and young people, including women. Uh, we face these challenges, ladies and gentlemen, as we prepare in 2024 for the following anniversaries. We have firstly the 30th anniversary of the ICPD Program of Action, uh, also known as the ICPD 30. We also are preparing as well for the 45th anniversary of the United Nations Convention of the Discrimination Against Women. We are also preparing soon for the 45th Buenos Aires Plan of Action, and as well soon, the 30th Beijing Declaration of Platform of Action. All these frameworks are complementary and interconnected for achieving economic development, health and just transition, world peace, poverty eradication, and sexual reproductive health and rights, gender equity and equality, all of which are important elements of achieving SDGs. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, PPD calls on all governments to pursue innovative and transformative policies and explore alternative resources to promote South-South cooperation, which is proven to be effective, an effective accelerator to implement the ICPD program of action, the BAPA plus 40 outcome document, the Nairobi summit commitments, and the SDGs agenda by 2030. PPD through South-South and Triangular Cooperation continues to document and pro promote best practices among member countries for replication in the areas of sexual and reproductive health and rights, population and development. PPD also continues uh, to monitor the implementation of the Nairobi summit commitments among its member countries, particularly focusing on the three zeros, zero unmet need for family planning, zero preventable maternal deaths, and zero gender-based violence and harmful practices such as child marriage and female genital mutilation. PPD also acknowledges the governments of Egypt, India, South Africa for their contributions to the PPD South South scholarship programs, which actually have helped in the capacity development of many government officials in the region. PPD continues to support centers of excellence in also its member countries. Through the South South Cooperation Assistance Fund, the SSACAF, from the government of China, uh, PPD is reducing maternal mortality in Bangladesh and will soon replicate the program in other member countries. In partnership with UNFPA, PPD con uh, continues to convene the international interministerial conferences on South-South cooperation in population and development, where ministers and government officials from PPD member countries um, reaffirm their commitments to work together in the fields of reproductive health, population, and development. In partnership with uh, UNFPA, PPD continues to promote the South-South Youth Platform to create a new generation of young people to advocate and protect sexual and reproductive health and rights, which actually is taken 
to be at the center of development. In order to promote South-South and Triangular cooperation, PPD has partnered with the United Nations Office of South-South Cooperation in order to assist its member countries to in integrate um, South-South cooperation in their uh, policies and programs. PPD also urges United Nations agencies and international development partners to sup uh, support government efforts in promoting South-South cooperation in the field of population and development for inclusive, balanced, and sustainable development. PPD will continue to work with various partners to expedite the progress towards achieving the ICPT uh, uh, program of action, the BAPA Plus 40 outcome document, the Nairobi Summit commitments, and the SDG agenda by 2030 so that no one is left behind. In conclusion, Mr. President, um, PPD would also want to announce that um, in uh, October 20, um, uh, uh, this year, um, uh, on the 9th to the 10th of October, uh, uh, PPD jointly with UNFPA will hold a high-level consultative conference leading up to the ICPD uh, 30 in uh, Victoria Falls uh, in Zimbabwe. Uh, I thank you for your attention. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Partners for Population and Development for giving us an overview of uh, your initiatives within the South-South Cooperation Initiative. I think that what was most fascinating was the fact that you've, uh, you've, uh, you've decided to engage youth uh, in the center uh, to promote South-South um, Cooperation uh, uh, in the process of, uh, <clears throat> of the maintenance of reproductive health, which I thought was a great initiative because uh, distinguished uh, excellencies, youth, <clears throat> we need the energy of youth uh, to put in place uh, our, if we have wisdom, our resources, uh, we need youth. After all, we were the youth of yesterday and the adults of today, and the youth of tomorrow uh, will be the, uh, the youth of today will be the adults of tomorrow. So this intergenerational trust can be built, perhaps uh, an initiative like uh, the Partners for Population and Development is some, an initiative that we can probably look to as an example of uh, our engagement with you. Thank you very much for that statement. The, uh, you bring it to an end? Mm -hmm. Yes? Hopefully I have one more. Yes. Uh, is there any uh, delegate who would like to make use of this time to make a statement or an observation or a comment or can arouse some discussion? You are free to make use of the floor. <clears throat> right. Uh, I, I see that uh, we uh, do not have any response to that invitation. Uh, that being the case, uh, distinguished delegates, uh, this brings to a close uh, the end, uh, the two days proceedings of this afternoon's plenary meeting. We will resume our meeting tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. in this conference room to continue the discussions on items two, three, and four. Now, this will be followed by the thematic discussion in the afternoon on accelerating the recovery from the coronavirus disease, uh, the pandemic, uh, sustainable development through South-South and triangular cooperation. Uh, agenda item five will be followed in the afternoon. Uh, those are the only announcements that I have for the moment. Uh, that being the case, I would bring the to today's afternoon's meeting to a close. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Sir. Pleasure.